From stories across the globe to stories here at home, this is the National News Broadcast. A very good evening to you. I'm Sharifa Tahir. A very good evening indeed. I'm Charita Minipurarachi. And I'll just move on to the headlines for tonight's news. President says the security of children should be strengthened at the rural level. A new circular for pregnant mothers to work from home. Opportunity for all state employees to report to work under two shifts. A year has passed since the formation of a government with two-third majority under the proportional representation. President Gotabe Rajapaksha stresses that the security of children should be strengthened at rural level. President Rajapaksha stressed the need to safeguard the children from drug addiction and at the same time to study and address the factors that motivated them to use these drugs. The President made these remarks at a discussion held with the National Child Protection Authority and Line Institutes at the Presidential Secretariat this morning. Special attention has been paid to empowering children and women in the national policy framework Vistas of Prosperity and Splendor. A separate state ministry has been established to accomplish this. While commending the state ministry's efforts to prevent violence against children and women, the president highlighted the importance of studying the research conducted on child development in other countries and the possibility of implementing those mechanisms in urban and rural areas. The president stated that the main responsibility of the Child Protection Authority is to direct all children to undergo mandatory preschool, school and dharma school education and to find out the reasons for children failing to attend schools and provide solutions. The president pointed out that the relationship between the children and parents could be strengthened through the cultivation of spiritual virtues by encouraging the children belonging to all religions to attend religious schools. The president pointed out the need to raise awareness on violence against women in the workplace, to pay special attention to the children whose mothers are living abroad, and to identify the children who may be at the risk of being harassed. Pial Nishanta, State Minister of Women and Child Development, Preschools and Primary Education, School Infrastructure and Education Services, said that all the necessary steps are being taken to launch the National Child Protection Policy in line with the vistas of prosperity and splendor. State Minister Shanta said that steps have been taken to construct a house for the girl who died of burn injuries sustained at the house of MP Richard Badiuddin to uplift the economy of the victim's family and to create self-employment opportunities for the victim's two sisters. The State Minister also pointed out the measures that have been taken to prevent incidents of child and women abuse and to expedite court proceedings related to these incidents. The President was briefed on the performance of the NCPA and line institutions. Secretary to the President P.B. Jayasundara, Secretary to the Ministry of State K.M.S.D. Jayasekara, NCPA Chairman Prof. Mudita Vidhanapathirina and the directors and the officials of the relevant institutions were present at the meeting. In the meantime, Director of Lady Ridgeway Hospital for Children, Dr. G. Vijay Surya, says that the admission of COVID-19 infected small children to the hospitals has increased following the rapid spread of the Delta variant in the country. At the moment, Lady Ridgeway Hospital, we have noticed that there are a lot of children are admitting these days with the corona infection. At the moment, there are five wards we have allocated for the small children, but space is not enough. That is why we have selected another building for the treating of the, the pediatric cases at the Rajagiriya, the premises of Ayurveda Hospital. There are over 100 patients we can accommodate in there. Somehow, we are not going to take direct admission to Rajagiriya. We are going to admit it at Lady Ridgeway Hospital and Lady Later on, we are transferring to the Rajagiriya Ayurveda Center for the management. That center, of course, managing by the staff of the Ledridge Hospital or the consultants, doctors and nurses are from the Ledridge Hospital. And meanwhile, police media spokesman, senior DIG Ajit Rohan says that police have taken 123 persons into custody during last 24 hours for violating quarantine regulations. Accordingly, a total of 53,266 persons have been arrested thus far for such violations. 
123 suspects have been arrested in connection with the offences of face mask, social distancing and quarantine rule, violations of quarantine rules and regulations for a period of last uh, 24 hours. Total number of 53,266 suspects have been arrested in connection with the same offences for uh, since the 30th of October 2022 date. We have filed charges against 50,000 persons and uh, we are going to file charges against another 3,500 persons. If a person is found guilty of the charges in respect of quarantine law, the court can impose 10,000 uh, rupees fine and in addition to that uh, six month rigorous imprisonment. Therefore, the general public are requested to adhere with quarantine rules and regulations all the time. The 44 teachers who were taken into custody while engaging in a protest action before the presidential secretariat yesterday were released on personal bails. The apprehended teachers were produced before the Colombo Fort Magistrate this evening. They were granted bail subsequently. The court ordered to release the vehicles apprehended by the police along with them. Meanwhile, opposition leader Sajid Premadasa visited the teachers who have been arrested and detained by the Colombo Harbour Police this morning. The police have indicated that the entry into the premises is prohibited without approval from the port's authority. The opposition leader inquired the reason for the denial for his entry into the port premises at the parliament today. He inquired as the opposition leader and parliamentarian Nalim Bandara have no rights to visit the detained teachers and the principals. Minister Rohita Begunavadana said that the permission should be taken from three authorities when entering the Ports Authority. Accordingly, permission has to be taken from Ports Authority, Sri Lanka Navy and Sri Lanka Customs. He said that those who prevented them to enter the parliament over the fuel crisis are making allegations in return today. The minister charged that the relevant protests are underway under the blessings of the opposition leader. Today marks the first year anniversary following the formation of a two-third majority government under the proportional representation for the first time in history. Present government is considered as the government which has fulfilled the aspirations of the people while facing the most number of challenges in the history. The 2020 August general election was held in a setting where the first wave of the coronavirus was successfully controlled. Accordingly, Sri Lanka Podujana Paramuna clinched a significant victory in 18 districts at the election. Sri Lanka Podujana Paramuna, a political party which was formed three years prior to the election, made into record books after claiming a two-third majority in the parliament. Minister Basil Rajapaksha steered the party towards the victory while introducing a new political propaganda strategies amidst a corona-controlled setting. The new government initiated its priority objectives in a favour of public welfare service while establishing a cabinet with limited number of ministers as promised to the nation. As the world faced the challenges rose with COVID-19 pandemic, Sri Lanka too became a victim of vicious outbreak. A discussion with the village program was initiated even before the formation of the present government. The objective of this program was to identify issues pertaining to villages. Following the formation of present government, the president reached out to rural communities and took measures to resolve their issues. Accordingly, various development initiatives including housing, roads, irrigational, reconstructions, school development, distribution of land deeds and provision of drinking water facilities were initiated, resolving the issue of the rural communities. Present government refrained from deducting the financial provisions allocated for the development process of the country, even though the state revenue continued to deplete. Accordingly, the program to develop rural infrastructure facilities was carried out under the 100,000 km road development project. The provision of 100,000 job opportunities for graduates is another pledge made by the present government. Accordingly, the government was succeeded in transforming the pledge into reality within a period of one year. The program to provide job opportunities for those who are deprived of jobs and from low-income earning families is currently underway amidst many challenges. Introducing a health protective dietary trend for the public is another pledge mentioned in the Vistas of Prosperity policy statement. Accordingly, the people are preparing for the use of organic fertilizer following the measures taken to avert the use of chemical fertilizer. The decision will be remembered 
tempered as a decision reached for the protection of the future populations of this country. The present government has also taken initiatives in planting 100,000 coconut saplings across the country, bringing new hopes for the cultivation sector. Purchasing of paddy for this season has commenced while providing a certified price rate to the farmers for their paddy. Project to construct 14,000 housing facilities for rural low-income earning families by constructing at least one house in each Gramar Dahari division has reached its final phase. The present government, which directs its attention towards renewable energy, has initiated many projects in this regard. Accordingly, wind power plants are being constructed in Poonarin and Poonakarin areas in Mana. Also, the establishment of the solar power plant in Siabalandua is a new chapter in the country's power sector. In addition, reconstruction of small and medium-scale irrigation projects and Madhya in Vimba province have also been initiated. The entire world is grappled with the COVID-19 pandemic. Experts have pointed out that the vaccination is one of the solutions for this ongoing crisis situation. The government has also been able to provide more than 13.2 million vaccine doses thus far at a vaccination rate of 5,000 doses per day. Accordingly, Sri Lanka stands ahead many countries with its vaccination drive. The government is aiming to provide vaccines to all people about 30 years of age at the end of this month. Steps have been taken to provide an allowance worth 5,000 rupees in two occasions for the economically affected individuals due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Accordingly, the government has spent more than 23 billion rupees. Although the government has faced many challenges, unlike any past governments, it never failed to fulfill the aspirations of the public. The government's aspiration is to create the strongest government in the history of the country and fulfill the hopes of the public who helped in forming the present government. Continuing with more local stories, the government emphasizes that the policy to ban the use of organic fertilizers remains unchanged. A decision has been reached to import several high-quality components, including nitrogen, under a strict regulatory process. These remarks were shared at a media briefing held at the Presidential Media Centre today. Ministry of Finance issued a Gazette notification recently granting permission to several high-quality components including nitrogen required for agricultural purposes. However, several media outlets has reported that the government had revised the decision on the use of organic fertilizer. Accordingly, a media briefing was held at the Presidential Media Centre today to convey the right information over the decisions made in this regard. Responding to the question raised by journalists as to how the government will respond if the harvest reduces due to the use of organic fertilizer, President Spokesman Ken Sri Ratnayaka quoted a statement made by the President and said, Issues and complications may occur at the launch of the program. However, the implementation of a sustainable green socio-economic pattern should not be delayed. The government needs to identify the perfect solutions to the problems that emerge. The farmers may assume that giving up on chemical fertilizers will reduce the yield. If it does, the president guaranteed that the amount of over 50 billion rupees that is spent annually on chemical fertilizers will be used to compensate them. Principal advisor to the president, Lalit Virakunga, highlighted that although some decisions were made based on scientific facts, the government's policy on the use of organic fertilizers remains unchanged. Responding to the questions raised by the journalists, the principal advisor to the president said that transforming a country that had been accustomed to using chemical fertilizers for decades to use organic fertilizers is a challenging endeavor, and therefore the different opinions directed at the move were reasonable. Despite import restrictions, certain decisions have to be taken in terms of national interest, but these decisions will not be taken outside of policy, Finance Minister Secretary S.R. Artigala stressed. Commenting on the decision taken to import only natural chelated minerals and micro matter nutrients, the Finance Ministry Secretary said that such measures are being implemented under the strict supervision and recommendation of the Ministry of Agriculture and other relevant institutions. Imported, and those are essential for the biological enrichment of the soil. The secretary pointed out that as the use of organic fertilizer is a brand new experience for many farmers, a mechanism has been implemented to monitor
monitor these activities on a weekly basis and plans are all set to apply new technologies and techniques for this purpose. We further added that the experts from state universities, faculties of agriculture and the field would be consulted in this regard and noted that they would be obliged to have the support of media outlets as well. Dr. Arjan Tedesilva, Director General of Department of Agriculture, stated that the soil tests will commence next week. Plans have been made to provide the required amount of organic fertilizer in each area based on a code given to the farmers following a soil test. Moving to the local update of the COVID-19 pandemic situation, Minister Pavitra Vanyarachi says the program to medically supervise COVID-19 patients without complications from their own residences, which was initiated in Western Province, will be carried out across the country from next Monday. Meanwhile, the inoculation of the first dose of Sinopharm vaccine for those who are about 60 years of age are yet to be vaccinated was carried out in five centres today. Accordingly, the vaccine can be obtained from Colombo National Hospital, Kalubavada Teaching Hospital, IDH Hospital, Avisavela District Hospital and Vihar Mahadevi Park in Colombo. The administration of the first dose of Sinopharm vaccine for those who are above 60 years of age and the inoculation of its second dose for other people who were carried out at Kalubavada Teaching Hospital today. Inoculation of the second dose of this AstraZeneca vaccine in the Western Province has been carried out since August 1st. A total of 421,654 persons have received the second dose thus far. Provision of the second dose of this AstraZeneca vaccine will be conducted until tomorrow. The vaccination program at the Vihar Mahadevi Park was held successfully today. The program opened for 24 hours is being operated by Sri Lanka Army. A program to provide the second dose of AstraZeneca vaccine was held at Madagama Sunandarama Vihare in Gampaha today. The program to vaccinate the prison inmates, prison inmates rather, was initiated from prison in Colombo today. The vaccination of the inmates in the other provinces will be prisons inoculated in the next couple of days. Meanwhile, Horana MOH office has initiated a program to vaccinate those who are unable to reach the established centers to receive the vaccine by visiting them in the residences. The relevant program was initiated today. 13,262 doses, 13,262,725 doses of vaccine have been so inoculated on people using COVID-19 immunization program. Sri Lanka Red Cross and Uber Sri Lanka have agreed for the request made by Prime Minister Bahindra Rajapaksha today to provide 50,000 transport facilities for the people affected with transport difficulties on free of charge to strengthen the vaccination program. The relevant agreement was extended during a meeting held at the Temple Trees to brief on the progress achieved in the program to provide transport facilities on free of charge for the doctors, nurses and other health staff engaged in COVID-19 treatment duties in Colombo, Gampaha, Kalutara and Kandy districts. Commending the services by the medical personnel to safeguard the public from COVID-19 pandemic, the Prime Minister expressed displeasure towards Sri Lanka Red Cross and Uber Sri Lanka for providing transport facilities on free of charge. Pointing out that the vaccination program to protect the public should be further strengthened, the Prime Minister emphasized on the importance in providing free transport services for the public faced with difficulties to visit vaccination centres. President of Sri Lanka Red Cross, Jakarta Besingh, and operations manager of Uber Sri Lanka, S. Lianagay, were present on this occasion. Meanwhile, our correspondent said that two COVID-19 patients who were taken in Palapitya Hospital for admission were treated in an ambulance due to a protest organized by the hospital staff today. Meanwhile, State Minister Professor Channa Jayasumana said in Parliament today that a new circular will be issued. 13,262,725 doses of vaccines have so far been inoculated on people under the COVID-19 immunization program. In the last seven days, 2,493,490 doses of vaccines have been delivered to the people. A total of 197,349 persons were administered with the COVID-19 vaccine yesterday. The percentage of persons received at least one dose of vaccine in the population more than 30 years of age has increased to 92.34. At least one dose of vaccine has been given to 94.09 in the Gampa district, 87.48% in the Kaludra district and 83.74% in the Kalambo district. The health division 
said that more than 75% of vaccines has been delivered to people in 16 districts. Meanwhile, State Minister Professor Channa Jayasumana said in the parliament today that a new circular will be issued allowing pregnant mothers to work from home. He further said that the existing circular will be revised allowing other state employees to report to work under two shift basis per week. Meanwhile, 1,855 COVID-19 patients were detected from the country today. Meanwhile, 1,841 patients left the hospital today following complete recovery. Health Services Director General confirmed that a total of 94 deaths occurred yesterday, which is the highest single-day hike reported in the country. State Minister Lasanta Lagiyavana said that a gazette notification will be issued next week to control the price rates of PCR and antigen tests. Minister Nama Rajapaksha says that new measures are in place from this year with the objective to increase the participation of local athletes at the future Olympic competitions. The minister further said that steps will be taken to provide foreign training for these athletes. The minister made these remarks while addressing the parliament today. Parliamentarian Chaminda Vijayasuri said that many Olympic athletes have discontinued their careers due to inadequate facilities required for sporting needs. Therefore, he inquired the plans which have been made for the betterment of the sports sector. Minister Namal Rajabasha said that each country has to prepare for 10 to 15 years to win an Olympic medal. He said that Japan was able to reach the third place in the medal table at this year's Olympics due to planning carried out for the last 15 years. However, he added that plans in Sri Lanka continue to change within gaps of six months. The minister said that the relevant plan up to 2032 will be formulated through the Sports Council and will work towards a victory accordingly. He further said that the government government expects to identify several athletes and send them abroad for training purposes. He said that the government will make all necessary investments to allow athletes to march towards international victories. Addressing a query over the official kits of the athletes represented the country, the minister said that the Olympic Committee has taken measures in this regard. Several athletes had requested to compete in their usual attires, the minister said. He further added that a report in this regard has been requested from the relevant authorities. Minister Namal Rajapaksha said that only the state minister and he participated in the Olympic Games and other ministers had arrived into the country for other official duties. He further said that he remained in the Olympic bubble throughout his stay and only allowed to travel to the embassy, prime minister's office and minister of Sports office. He said that he was able to meet the other ministers when he visited the embassy. And meanwhile, Ratnapura district's Sajivya organic cultivation program was commenced recently. Under this project, a comprehensive program has been initiated. The program consists of organic fertilizer, production of environmental friendly pesticides and pesticides, environmental friendly organic farming techniques, minimizing of damages to harvest, granting of standard certifications for organic fertilizer, pesticides and pesticides. Governor of the Sabragamo province, Tikiti Kobbekadua, parliamentarians Akila Elavala and Gamidi Valaybuda were present at this occasion. The ceremony was organized under the patronage of Minister Namal Rajapaksha today to extend congratulations and wishes for the teams of athletes representing Sri Lanka at the 2020 Paralympic Games. The ceremony was held at the National Sports Council Auditorium. 16th Paralympic Games is set to be held in Tokyo this year. Nine athletes representing Sri Lanka will take part in the competition. Dinesh Priyanta Herat competing in the javelin throw event under the F46 category has been given the duty to carry the Sri Lanka flag at the inauguration ceremony. And with that, we conclude tonight's news. Jyotas tomorrow at the very same time. Stay safe. Good night. Good night.